Hi, Ali. Welcome to 11 Questions. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Are you a tea person or a coffee person? Okay, definitely not a coffee person. I don't like the way it tastes. I really want to like tea, but it's been like an ongoing journey. So if I have to pick one or the other tea, I love a chai latte, but like not really either. I don't need either to start my day. Do you have a favorite reading snack? I don't tend to read a lot or I don't tend to snack a lot when I read, but I guess if I am, I've been really into, um, have you tried the chocolate covered acai berries? They're like Brookside brand. They're so delicious. It's like dark chocolate covered, um, like dried acai or like goji berries. I think they have both. And that's been my favorite indulgence lately. And they make a good reading snack if you're going to have a reading snack. Are you a mood reader or a serial reader? So I feel like having a book podcast, and you would understand this, doesn't always allow me to be a mood reader because I'm reading based on a schedule. Having a book podcast as a reader is really fun and cool, but it also, it like limits your reading in a few ways. So I think that I've had to become a more selective reader because my time is limited and so I'm reading books for the podcast. And then I, I don't have, I only have so much time to read books just for fun. I guess I would say that with the amount of time that I have to read just for fun outside of the podcast, I try to allow myself to be a mood reader. Do you always finish the books that you started? Mostly. So I'm trying to put less pressure on myself about finishing books. A lot of people in my SSR listener community have really kind of pushed me in this direction because sometimes I'll be talking to them about a book that I'm not crazy about. And they're like, why are you like, you're complaining about being in a reading rut, just stop reading the book. And so I stop reading books very rarely, but I do occasionally. So I would say like maybe at most like two or three a year. Do you prefer physical books or eBooks? physical books, a hundred percent. I do have a Kindle. If I use it, it's usually because I'm traveling. So I haven't used it in like almost two years. It's been sitting on my <laughs> nightstand and is definitely like fully dead and needs to be recharged, but I prefer physical books. Of all the books that you have read for your podcast, do you have a favorite? Oh, I'm going to look over here at my very large stack of podcast books because there's a lot of them and I need to try to, it's like picking my favorite child. Oh, Wow. I really enjoy Babysitter's Club episodes because I just think that there's so much to that world and to that universe. And the Babysitter's Club fandom is just really rich right now because of the Netflix adaptation and the graphic novels. They all came out on Audible, I believe last year or maybe two years ago now. And so I just think there's like so much to dig into with Babysitter's Club, even though like you maybe wouldn't necessarily think so because there are these like 120 page middle grade to young YA books. But if you read enough of them as an adult, you do get like reattached to the characters. And often the guests who choose to read Babysitter's Club have like their own deep attachments to the series. And so it makes it really fun to talk to them. And do you have like a least favorite? Oh, I would never say. <laughs> I would never say, I would never say, I would say generally speaking, I struggle with sci-fi and I'm not really a sci-fi reader. I'm not much of a genre reader in my like personal reading life, although I loved sci-fi fantasy when I was a kid. And so anything that's super sci-fi or like high action that I read for the podcast, I struggle with because I feel like I just, I have trouble like following a lot of the action in those types of books. It just makes me really like stressed out when I start the recordings that I'm like not going to be able to remember everything. That genre is hard for me, but I would never pick a single book. What was your motivation to start this podcast? There are a few things. So I worked in children's book publishing for a few years right out of college. And then I worked just in adult book publishing or more like general publishing for a few years after that. And then I quit that corporate job in 2016 to freelance full time. And about a year into freelancing full time, I realized a few things. I realized that I really missed being around book people and talking about books. And I realized that I really, as much as I thought that being a freelancer would mean being my own boss, I realized that like I was just kind of reporting to more people and I had a little bit more control over my time. But being a freelancer doesn't necessarily mean that you're your own boss. It sort of just means that you have like more bosses, which has its benefits. And I'm, it's nice to have that movement, but I really just wanted something that was all my own. I'd recently gotten into podcasts. I've always been fascinated with pop culture and especially the way that pop culture that we consume when we're kids influences our worldview. I think that combined with my history in kids book publishing really kind of came together. And then I just had this curiosity about like the way that the books that people read as kids can unite them. Like I think even adults who aren't readers as grown 
grownups, like they, their books that they read as touchstones when they were kids. And so I was just kind of like curious how all that would come together. So yeah, all of those different pieces eventually like motivated me to start SSR in 2018. Is there something that you're really proud of, of your podcasting journey? I am really proud of the fact that I have taught myself a lot. Like, and I'm sure again, you can probably relate to this too, is like when you start an endeavor like this, you have no idea like how much you don't know, or at least that's how I felt. I don't want to like project onto you, but I was like, I'm going to start a podcast. I'll have to learn a few things, but everything is new and everything requires patience. And I'm not inherently a patient person. And I think especially as you're trying to grow a podcast or grow a community around a podcast, like from the social media to the branding to merch, like there's so many different things. I'm a one woman operation. I don't have anybody else on my team. As I said too, I'm always like, I wish I had it. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I should have gotten a co-host um, <laughs> because I'm a little jealous of what you have going on over at Brown Girls Reads. I have like just taught myself a lot of things. And, and I think that's not to say that I've always taught myself things perfectly because I often haven't. But I think just the fact that I've like had the patience to figure a lot of that stuff out on my own, I'm pretty proud of that just at like a personal level. That's like a personal victory, knowing that patience is not always my best thing. If you were to be deserted on an island, which three books are you taking with you? This is so hard. Prep by Curtis Sittenfeld. Freedom by Jonathan Franzen because it's super long and takes a long time to read. And so that would keep me busy. Red, White, and Royal Blue. I also have one last stop by Casey McQuiston, but I haven't read it yet. So I'll say Red, White, and Royal Blue. I think those are good, three good ones, but also like such a fun age. I would maybe swap that out for Prep. Maybe I might bring such a fun age. In the end, if you were to pick one interesting life experience to share with us, what would you tell us? This is just sort of a, a story that people tend to enjoy hearing. So I'll give the short version. And I do think it's taught me some things. I met my husband when I was 12 years old, but we like didn't speak to each other at all. We were in school together and he was like very cool. And I was very not and I was the new girl in eighth grade. We sort of like lived in this, we lived like parallel lives in the same big high school until after we graduated and we came back together. We sort of reconnected through mutual friends when I was 18 in college. And we've now been together for 12 years ever since then. And I think that that, and maybe that sounds like a little bit of like a, like a silly love story, but I do think it's, it teaches you a lot about the core of who people are. It's just taught me a lot about like the way that I, it's something that I think about a lot, even with the podcast, right. And the way that we perceive ourselves when we're teenagers. And I had a particular self image when I was a kid, I had an image of who the kind of person that he was when we were living in this world together. And then we learned, we've learned a lot about each other. We learned a lot about each other, right. When we were reconnecting and it's been interesting just as our relationship has developed over these now, like almost 20 years that we've known each other, that you never know somebody's whole story and you can't make judgments about somebody. And it, things are always more complicated than they seem. And also like get out of your own head a little bit. Like, I don't know that we would still have been together if I had been more sure of myself in high school, but I just think I had a very particular view of who, of who I was and other people don't always see you the way that you see yourself. That's so true. That's so beautiful. Thank you, Ali, for answering all my questions. 